Right, so I'm home from Wrexham AFC versus Notts County at Meadow Lane. I bet you weren't really expecting to see me do a video after this game, but just because the match day vlogs are completely gone doesn't mean the videos will stop. This has motivated me to produce more videos, produce better content. I want that bad bit of news to sort of just motivate me to put more videos out and just to show the potential that this channel does have, even if one of the main elements has gone. So yeah, I am back today with a match review of Notts County 0, Wrexham AFC 2. A huge, huge win for Wrexham AFC. Going into this game, it was second versus third. It was neck and neck. People were saying it was one of the best games that they could see possibly this season and of course it is the mighty reds that have came out on top we were in 2-0 thanks to goals from elliot lee and ollie palmer let's get talking about this absolutely fantastic day out for Wrexham. but before we get going in today's video i cannot thank you enough for the support you've shown me on my last video i think it's near 11,000 views the comments are absolutely incredible i cannot thank you enough for the support that you've shown the channel the suggestions you've given me and you know this is one of the main reasons why i'm still doing it because obviously the motivation you've given me from seeing those comments a lot of people have said as well after the match day vlogs they said they wanted to hear me talk about the game a lot more so this has opened a new door this is going to be the match reviews i'm going to be talking about everything that happened in the game and it's not a bad way to start with a 2-0 win away at our title rivals and also as well make sure to subscribe to the channel we're on the road to 20,000 subscribers it's going to be extra hard now to hit 20k now the vlogs have gone before the end of the year but if you could get down there and subscribe that would mean a lot and let's get reviewing this game so yeah like i said it was Wrexham afc who came out on top at meadow lane today in front of a bump a crowd of around 16 and a half thousand i do believe there was 2800 Wrexham fans that did travel today it was a good day out good away and the away end was bouncing from minute one to minute 90 we never fail to make a good atmosphere when we are away from home but yeah i've got some talking points here that i'm going to be talking about the main talking points that happened during the game before the game and what we know from the game as well so the first one i want to talk about is the fact that Wrexham really did well at stopping Notts county from creating chances obviously we've seen Notts. they fired three past newport county won three nil on tuesday night so we were expecting them to be a good side in front of goal we know the quality they've got they scored a hat full of goals last season in the national league they've started off on fire this season scoring goals for fun macaulay langstaff dan crowley's having a field day in that Notts county team but today i think we defended really really well and i do think we did stop them from creating chances okay they had a couple here and there i think the one that stands out for me in the first half was that beautiful ball in from kyle cameron and Macaulay Langstaff just did head it wide or into Oconquo's hands. So that was the main chance of the first half. Apart from that, I mean, Arthur Oconquo had a good game. We'll get talking about that in a few points time. But yeah, I think we defended really well and defended well on our wing backs. We really did well. McLean and Mendy. Mendy as well. Pat on the back for Jacob Mendy. Defending against Jody Jones. We know the quality he's got. He's skillful. But Mendy playing out of position on his unfavoured right hand side did really really well although Jody Jones did a couple of good dribbles and stuff he really did stop him from doing what we have seen him do in a Notts County shirt this season score goals create chances you know I think Jody Jones was one of their better players today but I think Jacob Mendy did well in stopping him from creating a real big chance in the game yeah and we defended well and then we made sure to take our chances we had a couple of chances in the first half and I'm sure Parkinson was giving the players a rollicking because I genuinely do think we could have been one or two nil up at half time the same with Notts County so you know, we needed to make sure we came out in that second half, took our chances. We had a good one, Sam Dolby. It was sort of a mix-up in the box and it fell for him and it went straight into the keeper's hands. And, you know, you were sort of thinking, is it going to be our day? But that switch, Oli Palmer on for Sam Dolby. What an impact Oli Palmer had, by the way. Incredible. And obviously it was Elliot Lee who did get the goal. People are saying it was the deflection off Ben Toza's foot. You don't know how true that is, but Elliot Lee, he comes up when we need him most. You know, he's a good shimmy onto his right foot curled and it obviously did deflect and it beat Slocum so yeah 73rd minute we were 1-0 up and then Oli Palmer bags another one three minutes later in the 76th minute a good assist from Mullin and Palmer lethal in front of goal to make it 2-0 that away end was rocking the scenes in the away end so yeah we defended well we stopped them from creating chances and of course we made sure that we finished our chances at the other end of the pitch another point is Ben Toza obviously we saw them when the lineups came out at two o'clock we sat inside Meadow Lane we saw no Ben Toza in the squad and then coincidentally we saw him walking out of the tunnel in his team track suit and sort of thinking to yourself why isn't Ben Toza in the match day squad because obviously he's featured in the last couple of games for Wrexham AFC but well, he's been in the squad at least so yeah, it was an interesting one about that. And then all of a sudden we see Jordan Tunnycliffe in his bib. I think he was talking to the physio Kevin Mulholland and then he ran down the tunnel. 
Bento's had a talking with the physio and the next thing you know, Bento's is out in a kit. In my opinion, I thought Toza was going to start on the bench and maybe Clueth or Will Boyle was going to come into the side, but no, Bento's are straight in the team and I think that's the best game he's had so far this season. Cool, calm and composed, looked like a real league suit defender, showed his quality. And it wasn't going to be easy when you're marking the likes of Macaulay Langstaff, David McGoldrick as well, who I think we did really well to stop him from doing anything major in the game. But Ben Toza, like I said, best performance of the season, showed why he has gained promotions with Cheltenham Town in the past and showed his experience really, really well. I think playing against strikers like Macaulay Langstaff, David McGoldrick, who aren't the quickest, I think suits obviously Ben Toza better, as we've seen Isaac Alafe. Mo Isa, Jonathan Lacko, all fast plays I think have hurt Bentoza and I think it's got to a point where it is more of a tactical decision than going over people like Bentoza who've played a massive part in the past. I think it's more tactical these days because we've seen teams have quick strikers. Although it was a tough game for Bentoza to come into, I thought he handled the situation really, really well considering an hour before kickoff he wasn't even expected to be in the squad but we did it in time and he jumped into that starting 11 and played absolutely incredible. And another one that came into this side after a period out is Andy Cannon back from his suspension that he received the red card against Crawley. Improved massively in the second half. First half he was a bit 50-50, I wasn't really too sure what to think of him. I think he was a solid 6 out of 10 but in that second half he really strived. He was our driving force in midfield for that second half. You know, He'd pick up the ball, he'd drive with it, he'd find the ball either down the right or the left flank and I think he did really really well and I think he definitely does deserve a start in the FA Cup against Mansfield Town and who knows he might start against Gillingham but yeah I thought Andy Cannon played really really well. Show him why we signed him from a championship side and I hope he can continue this form because we've seen glimpses of it and we just need to keep Cannon consistent in that starting 11 because he we all know it he's a good midfielder. Another player that we want to give credit to is Jacob Mendy I've already touched upon that he was playing on that right wing back spot you know it wasn't gonna be easy up against Jody Jones I think a couple of fans before kickoff with fear and obviously Jacob Mendy is a left foot player and I don't think we've ever really seen him use his right foot but the way how he dealt with Jody Jones was absolutely incredible obviously playing Mendy on the right he's one of the fastest players in the world I think statistically he's one of the fastest players in the world so when he was coming up against Jody Jones we knew he was going to deal with him well with pace and defensively I think he dealt really well with him you know there were a couple of times where Jody Jones was able to get the cross in when he beat Jacob Mendy but after that he improved so 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 much and yeah he was Mr Consistent in right wing backs yeah and a slightly negative point to take out of this game. Mullin obviously received that yellow card for that sort of kerfuffle with Jody Jones in the first half. To be honest, I think both players did something wrong. I think it was both sort of a lashing out at each other. Some people are saying Mullin lashed out more at Jody Jones. But yeah, if you're going to book both of them, you may as well give a talk into them both. If it's that early on in the game, I don't think it was maybe a yellow card for Mullin and maybe a yellow for Jones. But if you were a ref, you have to be lenient in a big game like this early on. I know Notts fans are going to say Mullin should have received a red card. In my opinion, it wasn't a red card, but you'd have given them a talking to. And of course, I'm going to say that now that Mullin's suspended, but I genuinely do think that it was just a required talking to. But obviously, the referee felt the need to whip out his yellow card. Um, so Mullen is missing Gillingham at home on the 11th of November. Likewise, James McLean. It was a it was a late tackle. I think McLean's was definitely a yellow card. So he's out for the Gillingham game, which of course is a big game, and that's two big players that are going to be sorely missed for that game. But I'm sure the players that are going to come into the side will do an equally as good job as the likes of Mullen and James McLean. There needs to be a minute applause before the next match for how good Arthur Okonkwo is in our goal. The Loney from Arsenal had a blinder today. His handling was incredible. I don't think he spilled a shot, you know. There was one in the second half, I think it was O'Brien for Notts County. He rifled a shot in and Okonkwo just plucked it right into his midriff and held on to it well. His handling from crosses, you know, crosses were coming into the box. He showed his height, he showed his strength. His handling was incredible. His kicking, he did a really good save. You know, to stop a comeback from happening when Dave McGoldrick did unleash a shot from just outside the box. Great acrobatics and we need to make sure we get him. If Arsenal don't offer him a new contract at the end of summer 2024, we need to be on that straight away. Obviously, things could happen between now and the end of the season, but from what we've seen, he's shown promising signs and I think if we got him, he's young, he would be our goalkeeper for the next three or four years. That would be a position that we don't have to worry about because, quite frankly, he is amazing. He is amazing. We've seen when he went on his loan spell to Sturmgrass that he really fulfilled in the environment of the Austrian side and when he was loaned out to Rex, I saw Arsenal fans were disappointed that he didn't go to a higher level. So it just shows how lucky we are to have him, even if it's on a season-long loan. But... 
I genuinely do think if we get promoted to League One, we could have a very high chance of getting a Conquo on a permanent. We just need to make sure we keep behind him, keep giving him that inspiration to do better. Obviously, we've got a song about him as well, so he seems to be enjoying his time here. We need to get behind him. You know, he's going to have bad days. He's going to have good days. So make sure we keep behind him. And I'm sure if he is out of contract at the end of the summer, Wrexham should hopefully be his first choice destination. I'm moving on to another bit of bad news. Ryan Barnett and Owen O'Connell are out for eight weeks. Phil Parkinson has confirmed that they will be out for nearly two months, which is definitely a bad bit of news because that's eight weeks without having Owen O'Connell, who is starting to be one of our starting centre-backs, and Ryan Barnett, of course, he is our right-back. So it's disappointing, but if it means we play Mendy on that right-hand side, after we've seen today, he's shown really promising signs. I have no issue at all with him going right back. We've got Clueth. He's going to do a job if he comes into the team. We've got Ben Toza. We've got Aaron Hayden coming back from injury. And we're going to be talking about our goal scorer, Oli Palmer. What an impact he had on the game. He came on around the 70th minute mark. He immediately caused the Notts County defence problems. And he got his goal. He got his goal deservedly. Shushed the Notts County family stand who, let's be honest, they were quiet anyway. But... Um, yeah, really happy to see Oli on the score sheet. He's worked really hard to get himself back in the starting eleven because, let's be honest, I think even he will agree with this. Last season in the National League, he will have been disappointed. Although his stats were good, I think he'll be disappointed with his performances. He's turned a new leaf this year. He has been absolutely incredible. I would say he's been in our top four best players so far this season. Not only because he can score goals, he adds so much up front. He is a massive handful to defenders whenever he either starts or he comes on to make that impact. Oli Palmer is an incredible footballer and we're lucky to have him. We are very lucky to have him and I think it's £300,000 well spent because he's been incredible for this football club and today he got his goal, he played a huge impact and he won this the game, sent us home very, very happy. And I think we also did stop Notts County striker Macaulay Langstaff from really having any shots, testing the goalkeeper, you know, I think he barely touched the ball in the game as well and I think Notts County fans will be disappointed because Going into this, I think they had the strongest team they could possibly have, you know, although they had a couple of injuries and suspensions, you know, they had that strongest team and I think they really thought that they could definitely get something out of it. It is what it is at the end of the day, Macaulay Langstaff, he's a great striker, he's probably going to score a hat-trick or a double next week when they do play. I think we know how to deal with Macaulay Langstaff now, Ben Tozer played really well against him last year, I think he did a good job against him this year as well, but, you know, it's taken nothing away from Langstaff, he's a good striker, but today I think we dealt with him really, really well and we got our tactics in and around focusing on Langstaff really, really well. And obviously I'm not going to touch on it too much because I'm thinking of doing a separate video on it, but the magic moments that Elliot Lee does create in this Rex MFC side is incredible. His work rate, his moments of magic, we are so, so lucky to have Elliot Lee in this team. He's been incredible since he signed. That's double digits now. And we're still in October, we're still in October and he's got 10 goals and two assists, I think it is. So he's doing really, really well. I can see him getting 20 goals this season. Let's keep our fingers crossed that he does do that. But he started this season off so, so well. And like I said, we're incredibly lucky to have him. And just to touch upon as well, the incredible Rex MFC fans that travel today Day. I was a bit disappointed with the Notts County fans. I think they could have definitely made a lot more atmosphere, but you can't fault a turnout of just over 16,000. For League Two, it's incredible. And obviously, those 2,800 Wrexham fans that travelled were in fine voice. I'll be honest, I did enjoy, you know, getting involved with the fans, clapping. I, like I said, I don't barely clap at games anymore because I'm obviously holding my camera, but. I think they're still a bit red. My palms were bright red when we were clapping, you know. We were singing our hearts out. The fans were incredible. I've supported Wrexham since, what, the 2012-13 season, and I've watched them up until I started vlogging fully the 21-22 season. So in those times, you know, I was obviously used to clapping every game, but I enjoy it when I record, and I create some great moments for this YouTube channel. But I think it was just a breath of fresh air, you know, Obviously to be clapping, to be singing, not to be worrying about, oh, have I got the shot? Have I focused on that shot? Have I caught the goal? Have I caught a specific moment? You know, I could just enjoy myself. But having said that, it was slightly weird, you know, not driving home and editing the vlog, but yeah, it is what it is. The situation that there unfortunately won't be a positive outcome because obviously I don't think a media license will happen. And a couple of people did mention about the recording situation. They said they were disappointed. So, you know, I can't thank you enough for the support. And yeah, it was good to be back in the way and good to be singing our hearts out and good to be coming away with a big three points. Yeah, if you enjoyed the video, make sure to subscribe for all the best Wrexham AFC content on YouTube. We're on the road to 20K. If you enjoyed these match reviews, 
I enjoyed this one. It seemed like I was just getting my words out freely. I've got my notes in front of me. Really, really enjoyed putting this together. So get down there, drop a like if you enjoyed, and I'll see you in the next video. Take care, guys. Up the town.